This in no way has anything to do with removing teeth from your head or doing any kind of work on your head. This is for digging buckets only. Please do not use a hammer and a punch on your teeth, on your face, or anybody else's. Welcome to Service Call, a mechanics guide to service, troubleshooting, and repair. So the tools that we're gonna use for removing the bucket teeth today, a punch with a set of ice grips to hold it so I don't hit my fingers, because I need those for doing work and making money, and a hammer to hit said punch. So bucket teeth, the appropriate time to change them would be when they just don't feel as effective as they should be. Like if you're having difficulty digging, breaking through the, the maybe the ground's harder down low, or they're just worn down to nubs, that's a great time to change them. Lots of guys try to push them as far as they can, but me, once they, they reach a certain point and they just seem to lose their effectiveness and it's taking a little longer to do things, I think that's the appropriate time to change them. So what we're gonna do is we have the dig bucket coupled to this machine. If the bucket wasn't on the machine, you could do it on the ground, but you're you know, bending over. It's a lot easier to lift things up at a much more manageable height. I've also seen where people, maybe with larger buckets, they'll lay them on their side and they'll drive the pins out that way. The pins are directional. So by that, I'll just grab a sample here and show you. Okay, so what I have here, this is a lock. This is a pin. The pin has a notch in it. So when we're driving the pin in, you can see actually on this lock, it's got a bit of a, a, a chamfer or a taper here on the inside. And the end of the pin has a taper as well. So when this is going in, it's gonna go in this way and it's gonna open this up. And then once it comes to this point here, it'll collapse again and that's gonna lock the pin in place. And then when we're driving these out, you wanna determine which way it's in there because you can't really see uh, by just looking at the, at the bucket. You need to determine if the pin's going in this way or this way, which side the lock is on. Because if we're gonna try and drive the pin out this way, we have to drive this lock all the way through this section and this end out. So it's actually easier to drive it out the other way. So we wanna drive the short end out so we're not hitting it as often. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna raise the bucket up to a more manageable level and then we're gonna determine which way the pins are going. So it looks like the, the lock is on the right hand side of the tooth. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive the pin from right to left. That'll give us the, the shortest distance to drive the pin. But again, when striking anything, it's always a good idea to wear safety glasses and gloves. We'll start with the right hand side and hopefully the pin doesn't fly out and hit anybody. So there's our old pin. Sometimes if they're in decent enough shape, you can reuse them, but it's, they're relatively cheap. It's peace of mind. I, I'd just replace them. There are actually tools that you can buy that make this a little easier so that you're not kind of driving on an angle. It gives you more of a straight angle on it. Now, when we have them off, you could always check for cracks where these, um, these are called tooth shanks. So these shanks, they do crack along the welds. Uh, oftentimes when they're getting kind of old, the tooth does rock on here a little bit and it tends to wear this end down. And when it does, even a brand new tooth on, a, on an old shank will flop around a lot. And just again, for a finer control, it's nice to have everything nice and tight. So you can either build the shanks up with weld to take up that space, or if they're too far gone, you have to get these air arced off and new shanks installed. So this is a, a more standard 
style bucket tooth. This is what you will most commonly see. Um, this is, I believe this is called a twin tiger. It's uh, a bit more aggressive. I think it's used for harder ground or like permafrost. So we have new pins and locks here. Just like I had mentioned before, we want to drive the pin in in the right direction as well. So we don't want to drive it through all of this to set it into the lock. We want to drive it in through the short end. So we want that taper to go to the inside. Slip the tooth on, which will, when we're hammering on it, the tooth will prevent the lock from coming out. And then we can just drive it in. It's in anyway. There we go. So there you have it. Four new teeth freshly installed. I would say this is about as close to dentistry as I get. I can do your teeth if you would like. I cannot guarantee any results or any results that you will like. I mean the teeth in your face, not bucket teeth. That's how you do the bucket teeth on, uh, well, a lot of buckets, not just a 85G. A lot of buckets use this style. And uh, remember, I'm Sean and I put teeth on shit. If you want to learn how to put teeth on shit too, like, comment, subscribe. And if you have any questions about filters, undercarriage, or lubricants, visit FortisHD.com.